What if I told you that 7 out of 10 doctors would routinely make the wrong conclusion when reading research results in a medical journal? What if I told you that most medical educators and researchers make the same mistake? What if I told you that many are confident in their misunderstanding? I'm Michael Tam, a family doctor and researcher at the Academic Primary and Integrated Care Unit. Let's explore how we misconceptualize p-values and consider what we can do about it. I first presented this paper at GP18, the annual conference of the Royal Australian College of General Practitioners in the Gold Coast. We are an academic unit of South Western Sydney Local Health District, the Ingham Institute of Applied Medical Research and the University of New South Wales. Special thanks to Abir Khan, my medical student researcher who did much of the work. P-values are ubiquitous in the reporting of health research. When a statistical test has been performed, it is near certain that a p-value will be given. The problem of misuse and misunderstanding of p-values, for instance by doctors and scientists, have been known for decades, summarised beautifully by this quotation from renowned philosopher of science William Rosenboom from the mid to late 20th century. This might all seem very strange. This presentation might make you feel uncomfortable. Potentially, what might have been familiar will become unfamiliar. Congratulations for making it this far. As per Morpheus in The Matrix, Let me tell you why you're here. You're here because you know something. What you know you can't explain. But you feel it. You felt it your entire life. That there's something wrong with the world. What is P? It begins with choice. The following scenario is an example of something that is faced by users of science and research everywhere. Doctors, nurses, policymakers. A study is published in a journal. This example on a new blood pressure pill. In the article's conclusion, the authors claimed the new drug was superior to the old drug at lowering blood pressure. P equals 0.05. A reader, perhaps this is a doctor deciding on what to prescribe their patient, thinks that this concluding statement means that there is a 5% probability that this result is due to chance alone, or there is a 95% probability that the conclusion is true. What do you think? Is this reader correct in their interpretation? What is your choice? Is the reader's interpretation mostly false or mostly true? If you chose that the reader was correct, that the interpretation was mostly true, then you are in the majority. It is what most people believe to be true, but it is also quite wrong. In the world of the Matrix, it is taking the blue pill. You take the blue pill, the story ends, you wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill, you stay in Wonderland, and I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Although it is known that many doctors misinterpret P, much less is known about what doctors actually think P is. Our study used mixed methods to describe and categorise how clinicians conceptualise P values and sought to provide some understanding on why and how they get it wrong. Research ethics approval was obtained through the University of New South Wales. We recruited participants through the GPs Down Under group a Facebook group of authenticated Australian and New Zealand GPs, that is, general practitioners, and GP trainees. At the time of the study in mid-2017, there were approximately 4,500 members. I was a member of the group, and several of the co-investigators were moderators. Data were collected through an online questionnaire hosted on SurveyMonkey. The questionnaire used three main questions in sequence. A qualitative question, a dichotomous choice question, and then a question on the respondent's confidence to their answer. The qualitative question used the scenario that you've seen already. We asked participants to write a few sentences on what they thought P equals 0.05 means. We undertook the analysis from a critical realist orientation using thematic analysis with the framework that each participant quotation contained the conceptualization of P in the context of the scenario. Each response was initially analysed line by line, identifying in vivo codes. These codes were subsequently abstracted to higher level concepts and finally to thematic categories. The original responses were subsequently assessed and allocated one category by consensus. 
The dichotomous question is the choice you encountered. The participants were asked to rate their confidence to their answer to the dichotomous choice question on a five-point labelled Likert scale. 247 participants completed the questionnaire, men to women, two to one. The mean age was 40, with an average of 10 years working in general practice. Most received their primary medical degree in Australia, a fifth were registrars, that is, GP vocational trainees. This was a relatively well-educated cohort, with over half having a postgraduate degree beyond their primary medical degree. 5% had been awarded a doctorate, for instance, a PhD. Most were fellows of the Royal Australian College of General Practitioners, 72% were involved in some form of teaching or supervision of learners, and a third had been a researcher of some sort, for example, a primary or co-investigator in a study, or had a higher degree by research. The participants' conceptualisation of P equals 0.05 seemed to fit within six categories. There were three dominant misconceptualisations. The most frequent was that P referred to a real-world probability. That is, that P numerically referred to something in the real, sensible, concrete, countable world. This was effectively the interpretation of the reader in the dichotomous choice question. The second is the use of threshold reasoning. That is, that P equals 0.05 is used in a boundary to interpretation of the results. Interestingly, both sides of the thresholds were seen in the responses. Superiority, the new drug was statistically significant to show superiority over the old drug, and not superior. As it is not less than 0.05, then there is not a statistically significant difference. Therefore, the new drug cannot be considered superior to the old drug based on this study. Many participants use the words statistically significant, but this third misconceptualization used this in a self-referential manner, that this was an explanation in and of itself. There was some evidence also that the words statistically significant seem to hold a prestige within the decay of knowledge. Can't remember a single thing other than it means it is statistically significant in a research-approved way. In the dichotomous choice question on the interpretation of p-values, mostly false was the correct response. Only a quarter to a third of the participants answered correctly, and no demographic factors were associated with better performance. The interesting thing is that most got it wrong. Worse than guessing. Simply, if it were only the case of a lack of knowledge, we would actually expect that the majority should get it right, as some people will know the answer, and half of people who don't will guess correctly. The fact that the majority gets it wrong suggests the presence of something going on, an active, common misunderstanding. With regards to confidence, males were much more likely than women to be confident in their answer. In fact, over 60% were entirely or very confident. Men, however, were no more likely than women to get the question right. Interestingly, those with more research experience were correlated with greater confidence. We see from left to right those with low, some, and more research experience. Alas, and perhaps alarmingly, research experience did not appear to have been meaningfully associated with getting the question right either. Putting it all together, this is how our participants conceptualised P. But what is P? In 2016, the American Statistical Association published an extraordinary article on p-values, claiming that they were too often misunderstood and misused in the broader research community, basically openly stating that they had had enough of people getting it wrong. In that article, they defined p informally as the probability under a specified statistical model that a statistical summary of the data would be equal to or more extreme than its observed value. I suspect that statement doesn't make sense unless you already understand P. P can be considered as indicating the degree of incompatibility, the unusualness of the data with the model, as seen from within the system. The smaller the P, the rarer the event. That is, imagine yourself as an inhabitant within the matrix. A small value of p indicates that something rare occurred, assuming the truth of the rules of the matrix. 
If the event was unusual enough in the right context, we might come to the insight and conclusion that it is the assumptions and the rules of the system that are wrong. In the analogy, we see the truth that we are caught in the matrix and it doesn't explain the real world. Importantly, P is measured from within the system. It tells us how weird the data looks from inside the matrix, but it tells us nothing directly about how real the real world is. So what is the effect of P equals 0.05 on the real world? Well, that depends on context, especially the prior likelihood of truth, the plausibility of the hypothesis being tested before the experiment. 5%. Not very likely to be true, but many hypotheses tested in health are often not terribly plausible. 50%. True clinical equipoise, where we really don't know whether the intervention is better or not. 90%. The hypothesis is close to a sure thing. After an experiment in typical conditions where p equals 0.05, these are how the probabilities of truth changes. For the low plausibility hypothesis, it is still most likely to be false. The 50-50 hypothesis is now just better than two-thirds likely. It's only for the hypothesis that was almost a sure thing that it increases to the magnitude commonly assumed when p is interpreted as a real-world probability. Effectively, the real-world probability interpretation of P, held by a majority of respondents, results in the gross overestimation of the strength of evidence. What's wrong with P as thresholds? Consider P values of 0.04 and 0.06. If the threshold reasoning is used, we would end up with dichotomous interpretations of the data. However, 0.04 as a number is very similar to 0.06. They indicate approximately the same amount of incompatibility, and thus we should be making approximately the same conclusion. How unusual, how weird should the data seem before we reject the assumptions of the system? Well, that depends on many things. We should interpret p-values flexibly and within the context of the experiment and the plausibility of the hypothesis being tested. What this does mean is that statements such as approaching statistical significance, trends towards statistical significance, should be abandoned as they are at best meaningless and most likely mislead. This could be considered a crisis in the interpretation and use of science. Most clinicians get p-values wrong, don't know it, and misinterpret data in such a way as to grossly overestimate the strength of evidence. In biostatistics education, we need to provide a focus on countering the major misconceptions that p-values do not numerically refer to real-world probabilities in any shape or form. Likelihood of chance, likelihood of null hypothesis, error rate in replication, etc. No, it doesn't mean any of these things. p-values should not be interpreted using thresholds. Nothing magical happens at 0.05. It is an arbitrary choice. We need to focus instead on the actual effect size of the result and the imprecision of that estimate. P-values have been described as the least interesting part of the result. If you can't interpret a result without the p-value, the result is actually uninterpretable, and the p is probably just giving you an illusion of meaningful interpretation. As for the term statistical significance, we need to remember that it has a narrow technical meaning that is commonly conflated with the vernacular meaning of significance, that is, substantial or important. Statistical significance basically means mathematically unusual. It is best to avoid the term when you don't need to use it. Sooner or later you're going to realise, just as I did, there's a difference between knowing the path and walking the path. If you are reading papers, avoid the reflexive habit of looking at the P. It means nothing without understanding the context of the experiment, the hypothesis, the statistical test, and the actual result. If you undertake research, don't use impressive-looking p-values as a type of garnish in written texts. It means nothing and has a high likelihood of misleading readers. 
If you are an editor, don't insist authors on including meaningless statistical tests. Numbers aren't the results, they are simply a description of the results. If a description commonly results in misunderstanding, it is a bad description. Please read our paper published in the October 2018 issue of the Australian Journal of General Practice, available at tiny.cc pvalues. Abir Khan is a UNSW medical student and was supported by a scholarship from GP Synergy Limited. Andrew Knight is the Acting Director of the Academic Primary and Integrated Care Unit, Southwest Sydney Local Health District, Ingham Institute and the University of New South Wales. Joel Ree is an Associate Professor of General Practice at the University of Wollongong. Karen Price is a clinical academic at Monash University. Katrina McLean is Assistant Professor at Bond University.